assist everybody getting into the customer service situation. One of the things that, that both the, the landscape committee, myself, multiple people, as well as Flora Lawn have talked about was that customer service is great, but we don't need it as much if they do the job right the first time. The customer service scenario is not to be the quality control issue. As you saw on one of the presentations, they've got their managers, Brad, they're gonna do their quality control. You are not supposed to be the quality control like you are right now. And we're aware of that. And that has been a strong point in discussing with Floralon going forward. We want the customer service request for that isolated situation that happens when a crew leaves or for an enhancement as they talked about. They want to service the residents. They want to be able to, to, to trim your bushes even though you're not on the you're on the no trim list. So maybe you want to consider giving them that opportunity as far as the no trim list currently goes. I know there are a number of people that are on that. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and ask anybody that would like to come up to go ahead and hit the microphone. Um, and we will, I think you got to turn it on um, when you step up. And again, this is, this is for questions for Florida as it relates to where they're going in the future when they get here. Thank you. You mean I can't ask you any questions, right? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Uh, name is Skip Stelfox, 253 Sand Piper, um, lot 261. Been here 14 years as of December 31st. See a lot of people come, a lot of people go. Welcome. Um, our plants are aging. They're 14 years old. Some of them, you can buy and you'll see that they're halfway up to stem. And uh, so there needs to be some replacing. Now, they were put in originally by people who worked here. And is that going to be continued? Or do we have to buy new plants and pay for them? I mean, uh, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> We have discussed with them an ongoing improvement process, but if, if in the very specific and in the very short term going forward, the, the program has been and will maintain that if a plant is dead and it was original to the landscaping, it will be replaced by the association at no cost to you. If you have added plantings and you want them changed or they have died, then that is on you. But if they are original plantings and they have died, the association replaces them. And I'm gonna repeat, we have discussed with them going forward that we will develop in conjunction with the Landscape Committee a enhancement program that will need funding through the association budgets. That is not covered for 2017 going forward but will be looked at as we go through and yes, replace the, the aged plantings. Yeah, and they're not necessarily dead, uh, but you have to come by and take a look, Donovan. Uh, the other issue is uh, water pressure has always been low on our side of the street. I know why, but something has to be done about it because the, the grass and the plants don't get adequate amount of water. I'd be glad to have you guys come by and take a look. And one thing, the last thing is, over, I mean, under promise, uh, under promise and over deliver. And you'll be here forever. So as far as the irrig your irrigation issue goes, like I, like I said previously, we're going to be inspecting the entire uh, community here. Uh, and when we run into those issues of low pressure, we're going to figure out why and fix it. Um, we do have numerous mainline breaks uh, within the community that we're working on now. Um, and I'm sure we're going to find more as we go along. So uh, that's definitely going to help you uh, with the pressure issues. Yes, sir. My name is Bill Carr. I live at 917 Shorehaven. I've been a member of this community for, since 2004. 
and I've lived in Orlando uh, for 33 years, which makes me very aware as a homeowner of uh, landscaping issues in Florida. What I've experienced since I've been here, uh, there are three issues. I have a courtyard style home. Uh, it was one of the originals uh, called Valero Mob. There has since been, in the later models, uh, other variations of courtyard homes. The issue that I've experienced in some of the other courtyard owners is when weeding is done, spraying weeds, uh, the driveways are taken care of to a certain extent, and I'll get into that. But be, depending on the landscape company, they don't know whether they should spray the courtyard or not. It's open to the air, it's open to rain, it's open to grow weeds, just like your driveway. But the various uh, area managers, operation managers, uh, they don't know about taking care of the, 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 the spraying those weeds, which leads it to the only other thing to do is have the 70, 90 year olds that live there do it, which just doesn't seem right to me. You're paying for the service and it can't be that much of an effort to spray a small courtyard. The second part is I have decorative concrete borders around my gardens. And one of the problems that's been off and on is I can tell and see somebody go by and edge around those borders on the outside. Yet, when I go out to look at the results, I have grass growing over the concrete borders just after they did it. So it tells me that they don't really know what they're doing. And it's not my position to go up there and tell them what they're doing. And I've experienced that I've called as many as seven or eight times uh, to get service and to either for the spraying that's inadequate or the edging that is inadequate. One year, three years ago, we had a weed that grew so tall, I went and they called that weed Fred. Fred the weed was so tall, I went and stood up next to it, my wife took a picture. I took that picture of it. Fred didn't grow overnight. <laughs> I took that picture in just to show you how ridiculous it is that this, this garden had been weeded when I got a weed that tall. And so I took a picture of Fred, took it in to the office and showed the guy who was representing the landscape company at that time. And all he did was laugh. And it may have been a little funny, but it was an example of how bad can this get when you have a weed taller than you? So my concern is uh, I'm waiting to see because I've been through so many landscape companies in here and whenever I call somebody, they were always polite. We're gonna take care of them. Days, weeks, and I mean seriously, weeks go by and I can, I can attest that I've called sometimes two or three days a week to say what's going on because I don't see any results yet. Well, to answer the first question in regards to um, courtyards. the courtyards, we've already made a note of that. We'll make sure that's taken care of. And again, like I had mentioned in the presentation, we're going to be applying pre-emergence um, to every home in here. Um, we're, do, we're going to try to do it as fast as we can. We want to, we want to get that spring. Um, we want to get it out before spring. Um, so between now and then, we're going to be cleaning up your courtyard um, and, and making sure that everything gets ready to go. I think that you're going to notice a huge difference um, by using this chemical. I use it personally at my house. Um, I know these guys use it at their places. It's unbelievable what it can do. Um, you can buy it at Walmart. I know a lot of folks don't know that, but you can buy it there, but we buy it commercially, we install it, uh, and you're going to notice a huge difference uh, as far as the weeds go. Your second question about the edging and around your concrete borders, uh, where there's grass left on it, uh, it sounds like there was a, a lack in frequency um, when it comes to what was being done there. Um, so hopefully with our new program and the, the allotment of employees that we're going to have on staff in those zones, you're, not, you're going to get the frequency that you deserve, not the, when, you, when they want to give it to you. So um, I think that's the big issue with that, was just they hadn't been done in a while. And I know that some soft edging is, is an issue uh, in some areas. Okay. 
this well, point. Well, it's not only a lack of frequency, but 15 minutes after they've edged, I can go out and I'll still see grass growing over. Yeah. I mean, I can see that. I don't know why they can't see it. But it, it, it's so you're saying it's not been cut? It, or no, just, if, if the grass is still there, obviously it hasn't been cut. Yeah. They went with the edger, but the grass growing over the border. Yeah. Well, it hadn't been uh, again, with the, with the frequency change of what we're going to provide uh, for the homeowners here um, and the amount of uh, employees that we're going to have in each zone, I think that um, is going to come to an end. Is anybody perfect? No, absolutely not. If you ever have a problem, all you have to do is make a phone call. Um, <coughs> and of course, everybody's going to be nice to you, but we will be there. You're not going to have to call back three times. Yeah. I guarantee you that. So great. Or seven or eight times. If you call seven or eight times, I'm in trouble. Thank you. Hi, my name is Len Truschkowski, 638 San Rafael, and I'm not going to ask you anything about any plants or weeds that are my house at all, because you said not to. I did, did listen to what you said. What I want to know is why you talked about quality. Both in both parts of the presentation, I'd like to know what metrics you're using to measure that quality. I'd like to know if the contract that AB Homes has with Florida has certain uh, SLA, certain service level agreement in there, where if you don't meet certain performance metrics, you get penalized. Those are the type of things I'd be interested in actually knowing, because what you said here. Anybody who wanted the bid would have said that we did personalize it very nicely for celebrity, then I do appreciate that. Uh, but as far as the contract is concerned, how do I know what you're going to do is going to be any better? And that only can be done if you actually have a contract that was worded in such a way that there are performance penalties if you don't meet certain performance levels. And how do we know what performance levels you're Well, the quality control, they, uh, they verify that by visiting a lot of our properties and seeing our level. That's, that's how that's, as far as how they structure a contract, obviously that's not. Uh, there's that's, no, that's there's no to, metric that's, in place. That's up to, I'll be, I'll be glad to answer that. <laughs> In, in conjunction with the Landscape Committee, in the new specifications for 2016, there are weekly site visits with a certain cure period, and if those cures are not met, there are itemized deductions that will be subtracted from their contract. Thank you. That makes it much simpler. Good morning. My name is Thaddeus Criscola. I live at 512 Leaning Way. And I'm wondering if Floral Moon will be generating a FFC for the irrigation system. Two things will happen. One will know when to let out our dogs, throw on our hamburgers, and where do one during streets. And also will allow us to know when the system is broken so we know who to call and when to call if we got part of the proper schedule for the irrigation system supposed to be coming up. Okay, that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, yes, we will eventually have, after we get through the, the system, of course you can imagine it's a very large system. Uh, there's a lot of components and zones uh, and clocks to the system. Um, so uh, it's going to take us a bit to get uh, a grasp on it. And like I said, we've already been working on it for a couple, <laughs> couple months now. Um, so we'll be able to eventually tell you or we'll end our post on um, that dashboard uh, the streets and addresses of when your water is going to run um, and also like I mentioned before problems with the irrigation system if, if a certain area is out because of a computer board or a clock has went down those types of items are going to be on our dashboard as well as an email blast from Elm. So those things are going to be communicated to you right away. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, good morning. Uh, Bill Soko, been here a year and a half, um, 681 San Rafael. Uh, from Cleveland, go Cleveland Indians. I'm from Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm a race fan now. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> simple question. Ant hills. Uh, you got various ant hills in the in the lawns there, and I see the guys coming through mine and they blast all the ant hills down with the lawnmower, and then two days back, you know, two days afterwards, you're up here. So I've been having to take care of ant hills with the fire ant, the uh, you know, pallets and stuff. So, you got any plans for ant hills? Well, I think the, you know, there's an increase in service for pest control, so you, you're most likely going to see a big difference with that. Um, you're going to see more ant hills this time of year anyway. Um, and the reason is, is because it's getting cooler out. And they, just like us, like to keep warm. Uh, they build their mounds higher to attract, to, to absorb the sun. Uh, in the summertime, you won't see them as much uh, because it's so hot, so they go a little bit deeper. But right now, you're going to see a lot of ant hills. But with the uh, improved or extra uh, applications that are uh, that we're going to bring to the table, I think is going to help handle that uh, issue. Hi, my name is Dennis Santino. I live in uh, Verona. <laughs> <laughs> I just moved here. Uh, I don't know who this question is for, but uh, we're talking about existing work borders with main mainscape. And uh, who, who do, who's going to manage that there so that the residents here who have existing work orders don't get to run around about, hey, we're out of here and, and it's not my problem anymore, blah, blah, blah. And then what time frame or what patience should we have to where finally somebody's going to step in and take care of our existing problems? I get copies of every CSR that Landscape has in the system. And I will be personally, along with Rudy, when, when he gets back, uh, working those things through along with Florida. Um, our assumption is that once Florida has had the opportunity to go through a 30 day cycle, which is the mowing, one pruning, or I'm sorry, the two, the two mowings every other week, uh, the two, the weedings and the edging, you will see a, a, a marked difference. You will not be 100% resolved. We're going to need 60, maybe even a little bit more, depending on how bad your, your specific home might be in. But I believe after the first 30 days of floor lawn being in here, you're going to see a difference immediately. But we will be managing that and working with Lucas and Brad to get whatever is open in their system over to them so they have something to earmark or to pay attention to to pass on to those specific zone managers. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my question is this. You say a lot about the grass, blah, blah, blah. It's fine. What about the shrubs? I mean, when they've got shoots on them this tall, you can't get anybody to trim anything. Yeah. Will that be taken care of? You talked about going into the season now for winter, and you're going to cut back the people. Will this limit getting everything cleaned up? Well, if you're, you know, like I mentioned, we're wanting to buy weekly service, which means you're going to get service every other week. And so cutting the people, um, you know, or lowering the amount of people that's going to be on the site is not necessarily going to affect that. We're still going to be pruning. And, you know, I, I know that there's some areas that are uh, a little lack of taken care of, and, and oh, so I know what you're talking about. Um, but our, and, 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 and as Gary just stated, in our efforts to uh, get things where they are acceptable, again, we're going to be working very hard from, from day one when we jump out of the trucks on the first day to get things caught up. Um, and I think with um, the winter season on our side, the cooler temperatures, uh, plants are going to be growing less and we'll be able to get things under control. So, you know, 60, you know, 60 days to 90 days, um, we'll have, we'll have this place looking pretty good. In my opinion. Thank you. One, one thing I'd like to point out, Matt, is that there are 65 people is almost twice as many as what Mainscape had show up yesterday. They, they have been cut back. They had 36 people show up. At one point in time, 45 days ago, they had 88. That is the impact that losing the contract has done that we are trying to rebound from. 
but the 65 people in the seven zones is still twice as much as what Mainscape currently has. So yes, we will get there to where, with, as I said, within that first month and allowing them a cycle of everything, I think you're going to see a big difference. Uh, I live in Venezia and on the canal. The canal used to be, the slope to the canal used to be beautiful. It was grass mowed just like our lawns. Now it's weeds, mostly weeds, that have grown into the canal. I mean, it's, it's disgraceful. The, the yeah, it has to be taken care of. Floor along the canal, if I, if I remember correctly, is part of the CDD. And Floralon has been awarded the contract also for the CDD. So they have worked through some different bid issues so that Floralon will be taking mm -hmm. care of this entire community. Again, give them an opportunity to get there, but they will be doing the common areas, the residences, the club facilities, and the CDD property jointly. So we will, I think we will see that get that unison of service once they've had the ability to get here. Thank you. My name is Shirley Petronasi and I live in Verona. And my question, I think it's going to piggyback on her. Um, I'm not sure of the technical names, but one day on Monday they'll mow the lawns. Then sometime like Friday or Saturday, our properties have a drop off they know that area. And then once a year or twice a year, you have another crew that will come through and mow a little bit further down, like on the crowd over the swamp area, and they'll cut that area down a little bit. Is there any way that we can have all, not so much the swamp area, but the other two areas done a little bit closer so that we don't have different heights of lawn? Does that do I, I would have to come and look at that. And I'm not so sure exactly what you're talking about, but but but, but I can. I mean, if you. Well, our lawns only go so far, and then there's a drop. Yeah. One, one of the things one of the things that that the landscape committee did um, with the new specifications, you're talking about the bay and the slope to the preserve, the wetland yeah. area in your area. Um, number one, we have increased the mowings of those, so so they are not going to be a week apart any longer. And from previous conversations with Floralon, I'm comfortable to say they are going to be done near simultaneously, if not simultaneously, going forward with them. Okay, and then the other is irrigation. Maybe I can catch him later. Gary, you were great helping me. I have a twice a day, half an hour, every day watering problem. I talk to you. Yes. And I did. We did find the turn off, so we turn it off. We did turn it back on, but it's still, of course, it's and, and again, with their process, with 3D trees, getting things off the battery, and getting things off of where it, we have some situations where you've got it.